Hey guys, as we talked about last week, we are doing a bunch of retroactive episodes for the time being while Adam's figuring out his internet issues, Scott's photographing weddings, and I'm in San Diego Comic-Con. I'm going to keep this short. Let's get into what this particular retroactive episode is. So the episode that we picked was a movie called Frankenstein's Army, which was picked by our good friend and probably one of the only people that still occasionally shows up on the show from the uh, Reddit days, Canon. Um, and this is like prime canon trolling us with a movie that he wanted us all to hate. And instead, two of us thought that it was a fucking blast. <laughs> and I'm sure that anybody listening can guess who the people that the two people thought that it was a blast were. <laughs> One person didn't like it. And it's really weird because it's not in their M.O. to hate the movie that the other two like. <laughs> um, so it's true. This movie, this movie actually credit where credits do we should not like this movie no it's complete and utter trash but it is the most endearing piece of shit i've seen in five years i'd say i mean like it is still like i think fondly back on i think i, I think that i mean don't quote me here but i think this was the second time i watched it because i think canon suggested it and i had i was fresh off of watching it because, you know, when we would do our rounds in Reddit Horror Club, there would be a good, like, month or eight weeks – or six weeks, rather, between when people would pick something and when they'd actually – we'd actually discuss it. And um, I think I was fresh off of watching it and Cam was like, oh, you're going to hate this. And I was like, joke's on you, buddy. I just watched it and I am rare to watch it a second time. I'm pretty sure that ha that's how it went. Yeah, I think that's pretty much how it went down as well. Uh, <laughs> and and good, because the movie actually is a ton of fun. Um, it's it's dumb, but it is dumb good fun. So let's uh, go back and see when Scott and I enjoyed some garbage and, uh, and the rest of the world just kept on hating it. <laughs> yeah, kept on. It, it, Jesus wept. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's let's uh, talk about your pick, uh, Frankenstein's Army, which I think, as far as I can tell from the moderate conversation I've had with Scott and Adam, that this is a movie that is three completely different opinions across the board. <laughs> so, <laughs> so okay, well, so well, I'll I'll start off by saying that I hate found footage movies. Yes. Um, but Sorry. I I okay. I really enjoyed this movie. <laughs> oh god damn you! God damn <laughs> it, it was man. it was so crazy and okay. so weird and made so little sense that I had a really good time watching. This oh movie. my god! <laughs> oh my god! You have terrible taste in film. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, so let's go over to Scott. Um, I you know you know I I. I I fucking love this movie. Uh, you you can die in a fire. <laughs> but, but dude, we talked about this already. That you picked. You were like, I picked this movie because it was the two things that you hate the most. And I was like, yeah, that somehow it works. <laughs> I hate zombie movies. I hate found footage. But I love Frankenstein's Army. Oh man, what? 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 Are you guys? You guys are just doing this to piss me off, aren't you? No, seriously. Yeah. I, if you hadn't picked it, I would have tried to get somebody else to pick it. I mean, yeah. I found I I um. This was one of those movies that was stuck in development hell for like years, and I think that they had done like a promo, um, a promo uh, trailer or an extended trailer of some sort, and I saw all the crazy, um, like you know the 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 suits and the monsters, and I was like, oh my god, this is basically Wolfenstein 3D, like <laughs> as a movie. Oh my god, I, that's I exactly what it is. Oh my god, I didn't understand why I liked this, but yeah, it reminds me of when I was a kid playing Wolfenstein on my computer. I, 
wait, wait a second. All the films that you guys pick are like bad movies from the eighties. So it's like it's like you're trying to relive your crappy childhood. (laughs) Well, here's the thing. The other thing that helped with me liking Frankenstein's Army is right beforehand I watched Frankenstein's Theory, which might be one of the worst found footage movies I've ever seen. (laughs) I love that movie, by the way. I hate that. (laughs) I hated it so. I was like, this is so boring. And then Frankenstein's Army is like the first like twenty minutes. It's just like okay, whatever. It's dragging. It's dragging. But man. When they get into the catacombs, it's just like watching a really fun video game for me. I'm like, this is so bad <laughs> shit crazy. Like, the plot line's stupid, and whatever they think the reveal is, is ruined by the name of the movie, but... Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, Cannon, these guys loved it. These guys loved it. I got your back, buddy. Oh, I got you, your man. back. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. See, this movie I, I, was, was fucking retarded. It was... <laughs> like, <laughs> Like I don't, I, I don't hate it. I'm not angry about it, but it was like forgettable and stupid. And the whole time I was watching it, I was like, "Why? Well, I, I would, I'd rather pick up a fucking controller and actually play a video game as opposed to watch 90 minutes." <laughs> exactly. Thanks. Thanks. And and you guys brought up uh, Wolfenstein. Play a little game and see if you can beat my high score. Try and think <laughs> of all the video games that this movie ripped off. If you get above four, you beat me. <laughs> um blood rain was one of them blood rain we got bioshock we got wolfenstein we got nazi zombies and call of duty <laughs> I, mean, uh, I guess you could pick left for dead and toss it in there but and doom you can pick doom and doom yeah certainly yeah. doom but i mean it's it's the lead character is no rock so it's <laughs> not a doom movie the lead character is essentially non-existent who the fuck's the lead character well, the, the cameraman, the, but it's, he's just a camera. That's all he is. I thought Vasil, uh, uh was his name Vasily. Um, yeah, Vaseline. It, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the stupid me. I had the Wikipedia page open because I can't remember shit. Um, it, the the main character is the guy who gets it in the end. Uh, from the the Nazi, <laughs> this, this plot makes no sense. From the Nazi. <laughs> Uh, uh, Russia, the Nazi Soviet hybrid um, that Frankenstein created. You know why you can't oh, remember yeah. anything from this movie? Because it's completely fucking forgettable. Oh, I will <laughs> never, I will probably never watch this movie again. <laughs> and if you had not picked it, I probably never would have watched it in the first place. <laughs> but, yes. but I, as far as some, like, honestly, and I'm not, I'm not trying to bring up anything else, but based on all the other movies that were such these, dr- like, just draining emotional movies. I was totally ready for just dumb and fun at that uh, point. Um, well, I, okay, so I, I, my, my criticism of that is you guys, you guys are more or less um, picking films for escapist purposes. Like, you're trying to get away from... Well, not ne- you, don't know what my pick, you don't know and, what my pick next week is, yet, or next round is yet. Um, yes, oh, yeah, because I post... I, I mean, I picked Sunset Boulevard. For, for next round, which is almost not even a horror movie. Um, but it's proto-horror. It's, it is yeah. the original talking after death, narration after death movie. Yeah, like it's, it is, and that is a very, you know, it's not a, uh, you know, it's not a, everybody has AIDS and we're all going to die because everyone's <laughs> shitty. But, <laughs> but it is like, there's no good outcome to this movie. Like, like it's, it's based around a sad reality of that time and it continues to be okay, a sad yeah. reality. Like, I just, for me, it's not about escapism. I love escapism, don't get me wrong. If I have to choose between what movie I want to pop in my DVD player, I'm going to pick the hour and a half movie that makes me laugh and have a good time over the one that's going to make me question why I even live on this planet anymore <laughs> uh, every time. But if you're going to do, uh, you know, I think if you're going to do a sad, depressing movie... Sometimes less is more, and that was my biggest issue with something like The Lost or um, Red, White, and Blue, is that it's just one thing after another just piled on top of each other, as opposed to like if they had just picked one thing that they wanted to focus on and, and present that, I think it's more effective than when there's just so much shit being shoveled over top of it that it almost becomes comical in like a parody of how depressing can you make a movie? 
uh, well, I, there, there, there certainly is um, that. Uh, like not everyone wants to w- run out and and watch uh the mist three or four times in a row. Yeah. But uh I I I I think that well first I don't know why we we picked three psychopath films in a row but uh th- there's the value that you get from watching a, a film about a psychopath if it's well written is you can kind of it kind of helps people identify what that is. Um cuz that like growing up, you know, you'd meet a psychopath, you'd have no idea you know what what this guy's thing was. But uh, after getting a little bit of uh, exposure, you you kind of figure out, okay, psychopaths are superficially charming. Um, they have all these characteristics. Uh, films help you visualize that, and it's use, it's useful for people to to watch. Uh, you you might you might I, I think it's a bad idea to empathize with any characters in those sorts of films. But but uh, they're, they're very they're very useful for us to watch. They they have they have practical value. I think that y- you have a great point, but you're kind of missing the whole reality of why those movies were picked. They weren't picked because, I mean, and this is based on being on those podcasts and talking to those people. They weren't picked because of that. They were picked because those people don't think that the movies that Matt and I in particular pick, which are usually escapist films, have any value and weight. And Mm. that's the big point of contention in round six is that it's this weird argument about the fact that the shit that we pick does isn't worth watching or discussing because it doesn't talk about these real world issues like psychopaths and that's not the point of horror club we're not here to discuss like every week we're not here to discuss uh, psychopaths or or like the actual terrible truths about the world this isn't morbid reality this is our horror club, you know, like, mm, mm, so mm. I, I, I really, I think that that's a great point of view to be like, okay, the whole point of having a well-written psychopath movie is to kind of bring to light what that character, what that personality is like. And then you can utilize that when you're meeting people in real life. But at the end of the day, people pick stuff in horror club because they want to share a movie that they found val- valid or entertaining. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, I would make the argument. I like werewolf movies. You know what I mean? (laughs) But if if someone had picked five werewolf movies in a row, I don't care if that fifth werewolf movie was The Howling. I probably would have just been like, guys, I'm really just fucking burnt out on the werewolf movies. Can someone pick something else? (laughs) You and I are different. Wait, wait a second, Matt. You're, you're watching a different horror film every day. I would be burned out on horror films in general. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's, it's October though. It's what you got to do. You you burn yourself out, and then you know you fill your life with romantic comedies in November. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a cool well, no, time. I, I, well, I, I I continue watching horror films throughout the year, but yeah, I, so I, I feel you. <laughs> So anyways, Frankenstein's Army was pretty shitty, eh? <laughs> so uh, well, so did I, you only pick it because you wanted the last episode of the podcast to just be like a shit show? Um, well, I didn't know I was going to be on the last episode of the podcast. And, uh, <laughs> yes, I did want to sabotage you guys. Um, thank you for allowing me to do that. Um, no, no, uh, ser- seriously. I, it's not like we can be like, hey, you can't pick that. <laughs> We're completely at <laughs> your mercy. Well, I... I was okay, so I I was gonna I was gonna pick between this one, um, the Romero, uh, uh, what was it, um, Return of No, not Return of Living, uh, it was Diary of the Living Dead. Oh, see, now I wouldn't be giving this a lot of praise if that was the one you picked. Uh, yeah, and I and I was like I was like mm, uh, the and so the other the other uh, two uh, found footage zombie films are uh, Diary of the uh, Diary of the Dead, I believe. Diary of the Dead, yeah. No, I'd love that film, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's got to come up eventually. Diary of the Dead, exactly. That was a fantastic film. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, the uh, it was. I don't know if you guys uh, saw Diary of the Dead, but it was a um, it, it was a UK production. Did anyone see it? Other other than potential. I, I remember seeing like the first twenty minutes of it, and then being like, "Oh, why am I wasting my time?" and shutting it off. Wait, so, mm, yeah. wait, you're talk- yeah. are you talking about Diary of the Dead still? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm, yeah, yes, I am. Okay. So. I, I wasn't sure if you named a different zombie movie found footage film, and I like zoned out. <laughs> I'm like, wait. <laughs> 
That was a well, UK production? Like, I didn't, I actually didn't know that, but I kind of... No, no, to... uh, oh, wait, hold on a sec, hold on a sec, I could be, I could be fucking this up. Uh, Diary, there's, there's, uh, Diary of the Living Dead, right? Uh, oh, okay, okay, so there's two of them. With oh, hold on, hold on a second. No, okay, di- okay, there's Diary of the Dead, there was never a Diary of the Living Dead. Okay. Um, and, but then there's, there's a UK production that's, uh... That's uh, it's similar in in construction where it's uh, like it's, it's sort of shot like an anthology where there's like four or five separate stories and all of them for some inexplicable reason are carrying cameras during a zombie apocalypse. Um, and then there's also then there's also the uh, one of the best and I should have picked this one but it was it was too long. It was um, uh, it was uh, based on the Big, Big Brother concept and. Uh, Big Brother is a reality TV show from um, uh, United Kingdom. Oh and shit! What I, I've heard about this movie and I wanted to see it. Yeah, you can't. Well, you can't get it anywhere. So uh. um, you you might be able to find it on uh, on like Popcorn Time. Or... Yeah, because I'd heard like the premise is that they're basically taping an episode of Big Brother, and while they're locked in the house, the zombie apocalypse happens, and they have no clue yeah. about it. Yeah, and it's one. <laughs> It's one of the best. Uh, it's one of the best zombie uh, movies. You guys d- despise this genre, but it's one of the best zombie movies. Oh, I don't. Uh, I I actually Scott's the one who despises zombie films. I I've been. Well, I mean, I'm really, a little he, burnt out on them, but I'm just burnt out. Like I still like the remake of uh, Dawn of the Dead and Shaun of the Dead, and you know, I mean, I like I like more recent zombie films. I just don't think that there's anything else to be fucking said about yeah, it. Yeah, if, if when someone can bring a brand new way to present it, I'll be like, oh, great! Like I'm I'm very excited about this. But it's kind of the same thing with like I'm kind of over possession films and haunted. Like there's just the the current trend of horror movies. We've run to the fucking ground. Like it's time for us to destroy something else. I'm I'm ready for them to bring back slasher movies like they did in the 90s and make them for three years until i'm sick of those <laughs> like i, I basically mm, just mm. you and me i never get sick of them i want them to do fucking werewolf movies um they're not enough good or werewolf. creature from the black lagoon movies <laughs> that whole subgenre <laughs> that's just been dying you mean uh, humanoids from the deep <laughs> humanoids from the deep you got to pick that one that's i that's, almost he's did. almost I picked almost... it like six times yeah, it's, it, any Richard, any Richard Gorman film is like, or Corman, well, Corman, the reason right? I didn't yeah. pick it is because it's a little too rapey, and I think I need to kind of tone down the rapiness in the movies that I pick. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that, I mean that's it's well, not it, a little were, rapey. That is like the main plot line of the movie. Well, <laughs> it's not done in such a. It's not as rapey as Maniac okay. because, like, yeah, he doesn't actually rape anybody in. In Maniac, but it's like the tone is there, whereas Humanized from the Deep is very lighthearted because it's the eighties and ha ha rape or something. But, but yeah, <laughs> I understand that the whole crux of the movie is the humanoids defiling human women. But I mean, sorry, spoiler alert, anybody that's still fucking listening. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, I well, I, I my 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 issue with a lot of a lot of the. Um, the films where women make up the majority of the victims is it's uh, it's discriminatory, and I, I prefer my serial killers to be equal opportunity murderers. Oh, um, the name. So the name of of uh, the reality zombie uh, zombie film that was set in the Big Brother Big Brother setting is Dead Set, um, but you won't be able to find that anywhere except um, through uh, services like Popcorn Time or through Torrents, which I, I don't advise doing. Um, do, do, so do you want me? Do you want me to explain why I picked? Um, yeah. Uh, why, okay. Okay. So um, I I I don't know I don't know why, but I I liked the uh, I liked the way the actors who portrayed the zombies moved. Like uh, it it kind of reminded me of Return of the Living Dead with the uh, the very first zombie, the, the tar toxic man. flight zombie. Yeah, Tarman. Right. Um, they, they had they had these really creepy movements. I also loved how. Um, they 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 shot they did a found footage in World War Two time like time period where they had to use like a crank to turn to turn the um, the reel of the because uh, they're they're literally moving film past uh, uh, where it's being exposed they're like that's how they're yeah so so like the the apparent like whatever premise they're using uh, this one is is just completely silly it's. It, like the only the only worst thing I could imagine is them shooting this like a civil war found uh, found footage film, um, 
but then there wouldn't be any sound, so that would that would kind of fuck up that. Premise. Dude, that'd be a sweet. That'd be a sweet <laughs> like short Civil War like zombies. I I could live with that. Well, they did they did do a Civil War zombie movie. It just wasn't Civil War. Well, wasn't uh, I? I mean, I haven't seen the movie in a long, long time, and I guess they weren't zombies. But wasn't that a? Wasn't there some type of like Civil War zombies or Civil War? Like angry toys in fucking Tales from the Hood. Uh, you know, I, I I did see Tales from the Hood. I don't remember that. Like I think it's like the the racist senator has like a bunch of like little toys of like slaves in his office, and then they all like come to life and attack him and like hang him with the Confederate flag or something. Man, that's wh- I, I I saw that. I don't. Even, did anyone else see Tales from the Hood? No. Mm-mm. Dude, Tales from the Forever Hood is ago. great. Tales from the Hood is one of the best anthology films ever made, and I will stand by that to my dying day. Um, <laughs> Says the that, boy who loves gangster rap. And it's so hard. It's so hard to find now. I I had to buy my copy used on Amazon for like twenty five bucks. Because it's out of print currently. But uh, no, it's it's got the best thing about that movie versus any other anthology film is that it has the best wraparound story. Of any anthology film, there's usually the wraparound story is like the shittiest part of an anthology. Oh yeah, movie. it's usually fucking weak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, is, like, is uh, Tales from the Hood the one with the lady who turns into a gargoyle? No, no, that's Tales from the Dark Side. Yeah, which, which Tales from the, the Dark Side the, is the best ending to like that is a great fucking story. No, the wraparound for that is god awful. It's fucking. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the demon one that he was talking about. Demon's oh yeah, Kiss that one. yeah, is an awesome that is story. Pretty- um, can I can I throw out my thoughts about Frankenstein's army? Sure. Well, I, 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 wait, I didn't I didn't finish up uh, why. why. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. No, we got it. You like the hell they walk, so you made us watch the whole movie. <laughs> 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 they remind they remind <laughs> you of a better movie, so you thought we would watch this. <laughs> no, continue. Sorry about that, Cannon. <laughs> um. Well, I, I'll also I, uh, I I loved I loved how they. Uh, they, they there, there's like this recurring motif where guns were useless against the the zombies, and uh, it reminded me a lot in of how in Aliens they used the uh, the same because um, uh, they, they refer to guns in movies as penis extenders, like they're they're the ultimate uh, extension of uh, male masculinity, and it's rendered useless by by the monsters. Anyway, okay, that's so that's why I liked it: penises and uh, <laughs> I like the way they walked. A little bit I, different so. than what we normally talk about, but I like it. <laughs> That's cool. Go, Adam. You. Okay, go. yeah. I also liked uh, the swagger that they had in their step. I really appreciated <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. I like their swagger. So so this movie was 110% a video game. Like, all the way. There was, this was a video game put to put to film, right? So, a couple things. At what point did the cameraman collect a gold star and get invulnerability because those fucking monsters were right up in his face (laughs) flailing around behind the camera like it it happened like three or four times where he would get like completely mauled by this monster and not be hurt whatsoever Adam Um, Adam. so is this what broke your suspension of disbelief (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Actually, yeah, you know what? That pissed me off, and it really did take me out. I was like, that guy is dead 20 times over. Why? Um, oh, I'll tell you wait, what suspended my disbelief when we get back. <laughs> okay. Uh, we decided, before you got on the call, we decided that every week one of us would have to name the ridiculous, nonsensical thing that suspended our disbelief in this Wait, movie. wait, wait, wait. Wait, so... so th- you guys, you guys did not mention the fact that they're they're shooting color video, <laughs> and like non, at a nonstop, consistent like thirty frames a second. Like, yeah. you, <laughs> well, is, I, I, no, the camera, the camera is actually my suspension of disbelief issue, but it's not that. Although now that you're pointing it out, that should be the obvious one. <laughs> <laughs> is that it does this thing in found footage that drives me nuts? Is when there's a cut. Like, like he's he's <laughs> yeah. standing behind someone filming, and all of a sudden the camera just cuts to the guy's face screaming, and I'm like, "What is he fucking walking around trying to get the best shot for this?" Like, <laughs> dude, cinematography is important, even if somebody's dying. <laughs> okay, so um, 
and and they kept they reuse the same thing over and over and over again. We run down a hallway. There's a monster there. We take another hallway. There's a monster there. We just keep doing that over and over and over monsters. again. It was a haunted house. It was like the yes. Halloween haunted house. I know, but it was annoying <laughs> seeing the same thing done twelve See, times. I just got excited because I think for me, if if these were regular zombies and not these like kind of interesting looking robo zombies, uh, I definitely would have been like, "Oh my god, fuck this movie!" But each time that they introduced a new zombie, I was just like, "Oh man, that looks awesome." <laughs> I was yeah, like, it, I was literally like a 15 year old kid playing a horror video game and just getting. I I, every I, time. I liked it too. I was like, show me the next level enemy. <laughs> I want to see like what the next boss fight is. Um, <laughs> you said that guns were useless against them. I assume that they just weren't shooting them in the glowing marker points that you have to to kill the enemies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this, that scene where they get to that like little tunnel that goes down and like it's chopping up all the body parts. What the fuck was that? Why did they have a monster with a, a like a chopping fan on his head down there? It's a tube that you just pour stuff down into. Why don't you just put matter. a chopping fan? Seriously, yeah. your your gripes are so pointless. You are the biggest <laughs> bitch ever. Like, just accept it. It's he's an just, awesome film. He's just trying to come up with as many video game jokes as he can squeeze into his complaints. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> As, as wait, wait, wait! Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I can explain. I can explain why the guy had a rotating propeller for a face. Um, that, <laughs> it's it's, it's, cl- it's cl- clearly they had spare parts lying around from World War II inventory, and uh, the the guy had like a uh, they had apparently an aircraft um, <laughs> propeller, and they they stuck that on his face. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. I, 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 what's the, what is I, the symbolism? Come on, I, man. I thought that was, uh, <laughs> they they finished the design and they went. Oh wow. The, uh, we can't have this look exactly like a big daddy from Bioshock. We'll get copyright claims. What can we do to change it? <laughs> oh, so that's uh, yeah. okay. That's Anyways, true. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> I feel like all the people who hated Scott and I for not liking the Lost are gonna hate us for loving. Gonna hate us for enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't win for losing. We're gonna. We're gonna. Oh, they're going man. to put a vote to having us taken off as host of this show. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody else wants to punch in bags of horror club. Um, there's some, I, I think there's some ADD issues going on. But oh, okay, so hold on. What did you guys think of the ending? Give me, give me, give me some. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie. There was a part of me that really wanted him to do what he said he was gonna do and build the camera into the guy because I wanted him to look like the Cenobite from Hellraiser Three. Uh, Hell <laughs> <Earth. laughs> like, uh Actually, I think once he got captured, my interest in the movie started to wane because I wasn't seeing as many crazy zombies. I had to actually like pay attention to how stupid the plot line of this movie is. <laughs> I, was waiting, I was waiting for him to die and then respawn at the checkpoint and try it again. <laughs> <laughs> See, that would have been pretty clever. If that had happened, would you have completely changed your opinion of this movie? And you're like, oh shit, they're totally acknowledging their video game. This movie's great. You know what? That actually, I, this would be my favorite movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a mind fuck. That'd be great. Time to write a love letter to the creators of this film. I okay. So no one, no one, no one, no one thought it was a bad ending because I, I kind of dug the fact that uh, all the characters are kind of reprehensible, and then in the very end, uh, someone, someone more or less uh, becomes survivor guy and. Uh, he gets the mission done, and and then they have this glorious uh, Soviet propaganda style ending. It was I loved it the way they. I did like the I did like the propaganda, but that's just. I mean, I thought that it was kind of tacked on. Yeah, it was, but it was hilarious. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I, was, right, I, I cut so, you off, Matt. No, no, I, no. I, I said what I wanted to say. <laughs> All right, guys. So that was the second of our possible trilogy of retroactive episodes we'll find out next week if we do one more or if we're back to our regularly scheduled program but at this time i'm currently at san diego comic-con so if for whatever reason you're in san diego why not swing by booth 3919 we've got a bunch of really cool guests that'll be signing at the booth off the top of my head i know that we will have uh frederick schroeder who is the creator uh of the documentary stripped all about the history of comic book strips it's an amazing documentary that's definitely worth your time as well as rapper teacher and 
wrestling fanatic Mega Ran will be signing CDs at our booth uh, throughout the weekend as well, uh, and many, many more beyond that. So definitely do not miss out on that. And uh, Scott, you'll just kind of be palling around Ohio still, I guess. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and Adam will be doing whatever Canadians do. Probably not. Hey, being polite. Being very polite. Adam's not polite. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he's he's gotten more polite. That's true. We've 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 somehow domesticated him to our kind of <laughs> American ways. I don't know. No, no. We just basically like destroyed his ego. It's like you got. I mean, we've never been in a frat, but it's kind of like being in a frat in a movie. Where it's like they just destroy your self confidence and then build you back up to what they want you to be. We're That's literally us. we're like those frat aliens from that early episode of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and he's like the pledge that's passed out dead <laughs> on the ground. And we're like, is he done drinking yet? Make him drink. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the Geekscape Network.